you always need a big player to go to zero. That always helps, whether it's long-term capital or whether it's one of these crypto infrastructure companies. I would like to see, and I don't, I don't want this to happen, but it always gives you a good bottom when you get a large player over levered that goes to zero. Welcome to Dream Richer. There is common phrase that all investors are aware of. However, only 1% of investors truly understand it. In the words of Warren Buffett, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. For example, if markets are rising, greed can force people to keep buying and bidding up prices, hoping for ever larger returns and profits. This in turn can lead to asset bubbles, which will eventually pop. Today, however, we are seeing the exact opposite. We are seeing extreme fear. As such, when people are fearful, you should be greedy. What this essentially means is to buy the market when it's down. This is what you call buying the market on a discount. Right now, Bitcoin is looking very bearish, with some arguing that it's finally going to zero. However, like Mr. Warren Buffett argues, if you believe an asset will perform strongly in the long term, then look for the perfect entry position where the asset is trading below its intrinsic value. Hence, right now may be perfect opportunity to begin dollar cost averaging on Bitcoin as it stoops lower. By the end of this video, Mr. Kevin O'Leary unravels exactly what he sees coming in the future. Will we see this dip continue? And will more investors lose money? If you find the video helpful, then don't forget to subscribe. Let's get right into it. One of the challenges, and this is proof now for why we need legislation and policy on crypto, because if we had institutional capital coming in under the market, if they had allocated 50 basis points or 100 basis points to, let's say, Ethereum or Bitcoin, Solana, Polygon, whatever, you would have had a bid. Instead, because we're basically under-owned by institutions, we have tremendous volatility. And we've seen this before. This is not new. It'll, you know, recover eventually. But this is the nature of crypto unregulated. And so my argument is this really should get us focused on policy. Right after the midterms, I'm hoping for policy on stable coins and then into, into other assets as well, NFTs, that kind of thing. We're at the nascent stage, but the volatility is because we don't have the institutional bid. We just go back 17 years to a stock called Amazon. It also corrected 38 to 50 percent every year for 12 years in a row as people tried to figure out what this new entity was. And so there's always tremendous volatility in new and nascent technologies and new markets. And crypto is a new market. I still predict in 12, 10 or 12 years, it'll be the 12th sector of the S&P. There's just too much productivity opportunity here around payment systems and all kinds of other attributes of these blockchain projects that we just don't yet know what the upside is going to be. And, and I'd argue this, if you go to any graduating class, particularly now, it's very timely to say this, ask any engineering cohort, you're going to find a third of the engineers go onto the chain. They want to work there. They don't want to work in the other 11 sectors of the economy. They want the opportunity to create something new. And that's why you've got so much intellectual capital going into this space. You know with certainty down the road that the next genius ideas are going to come from this. Any college, any university, any engineer, they all want to work on the chain. And, and I don't want this to sound trite, but let me explain what how bottoms are made in any market. I don't care if you're in equities or in debt or in crypto or in real estate. You always need a big player to go to zero. That always helps, whether it's long-term capital or whether it's one of these crypto infrastructure companies. I don't want this to happen, but it always gives you a good bottom when you get a large player over levered that goes to zero. And that always tends to be the beginning of the rebuilding process. So if you have to sacrifice someone who used too much leverage, and it's always leverage that does this, somebody's over levered, positions are complicated, they're not transparent, they're not liquid, and they go to zero. Someone is out there on the brink of zero. That's okay. In fact, I'd argue that's a good thing when we get it. Now, do we get it this week? Do we get it next week? Someone's going to zero. I don't know who, but it'll be great for everybody else that survives because everybody will learn from that. And that's what I like about a washout, uh, an event. And, and I think we're, we're due for one in, in crypto land. And I don't know who it's going to be, but I guarantee you 100%, I've seen this movie before, 
You will learn later that somebody put on a heavily levered position, they got wiped out. And it's good. It's a good thing. While it should come as no surprise to close observers of crypto markets, it is a sobering reminder that volatility is one of the key barriers to adoption of cryptocurrencies. Volatility is a key measure of risk. The more volatile an asset is, the more price risk it entails. Beyond inhibiting core payment functionality, volatility causes additional issues. For example, second layers are impractical until the volatility of the base tokens moderates. Because of this large volatility, Mr. Kevin argues that he never uses leverage on crypto. Leverage trading refers to the usage of borrowed capital for investing in cryptocurrency. It is a perfect way of maximizing profits, but on the flip side, it's also the perfect way to lose a lot of money if you don't understand what you are dabbling into. I think right now, if you're, you know, licking your wounds, go to the large cap projects. I mean, the Ethereum, Bitcoin, obviously, Polygon, Solana. Uh, there, on Polygon's been slaughtered, and it's a good project. Great opportunity to add to it. Uh, I have very big positions in these in these names, and I've been nibbling as well. There's nothing wrong. The one thing I would tell everybody is you can't pick the bottom. It's impossible. You have no idea when it's going to happen. If you're staying long the category, you need diversification. I have so many different positions on right now, and they're all over the map. Now, come year end, what will happen, because this is a year where we're going to be looking at tax returns on all crypto trading and income, there'll be a lot of maneuvering on the projects that did not recover to take them as tax losses versus the ones that did. And that's going to be the nimbleness of trading. And that's why it's important to look at your positions and make sure you have liquidity in them because and most of these projects are very, very liquid. So it's not a problem. Well, the great news about the crypto economy and even positions like Bitcoin or Ethereum, these are decentralized holdings. It's not just the American investor exposed here. Bitcoin is all around the world. And it's only 880 billion before the correction, which, as you rightly pointed out, is a big nothing burger. And so that's nothing. I mean, you know, even all of crypto under two trillion is still nothing in financial services. So there's so much upside to the sector when we do get policy, when we get institutional investors and sovereign wealth involved, then you'll start to see real assets. But, you know, if Bitcoin went down another 20 percent, it wouldn't really matter because it's spread around everywhere. And, and most of the holdings are not institutional. For all the excitement about Bitcoin, no institutions own it yet. And that's the decision you have to make at a time like this when you're an investor. I mean, this is an opportunity to say to myself or anybody, look, if I believe in three years, 36 months that this there will be policy on Bitcoin, do I want to own it after policy comes and all the institutions start buying it? Or do I want to take a chance and live with some volatility now and buy it here at 24, or 23 or 20,000, whatever it's going to go to? I don't know. But if you believe in Bitcoin, it's a buying opportunity, but you can't guarantee that you're catching the bottom. Nobody catches the bottom. It never works that way. It's clear from Mr. Wonderful's explanation that we are about to see major developments come to crypto. One of these will be the education that this dip will bring to many investors. As Mr. Wonderful argues, we will see over leveraged whales exit the market because of position liquidation. For the person that gets liquidated, this is bad news. However, as Mr. Kevin argues, this is good news for the rest of the market. Why? Well, because it will teach us the right actions we should be taking to stay safe. This is why leverage trading acts as a two-edged sword. By using this strategy, not only will your investment amount strengthens, but also your risks. This is because leverage trading in crypto can only be appreciated if the market condition flows as expected. If it flows in contrast, it's not good at all. How do you think crypto will perform in future? Let us know in comments below. To learn more about the latest crypto news, watch these videos here.